What's up guys, my name is Gary and you're watching Gary Mason Travels. Welcome to my video, uh, I hope you're all feeling good and looking forward to travel starting up again, I know I am, I'm seriously looking forward to travel starting up again. This, is one, this video is going to be about backpacking routes. If you can think of anything else that you would like to ask me or you want me to make a video about, then do let me know. Just leave your comments in the section below. And before I start, if I can ask you, if you find this content of value and it is helpful, then do like and subscribe to my channel. That is a big help and allows me to continue doing what it is that I love and I really love telling people or helping people to get the most out of their Indian travel. So without, with that said, we're gonna get started. So today I am gonna to talk to you about backpacking routes. Now I'm gonna start at the beginning and this is gonna be the basics and the fundamentals of your first backpacking routes. I'm gonna do separate vlogs for, the, for individual routes that are a little bit more complicated. Uh, these routes, while I say these are, it's just that they're ideal for beginners, you know, um, because they've got the best tourist infrastructure. Now, many of you might be saying, I don't want to head somewhere that's touristy, but they're touristy for a reason, you know. Who hasn't heard of the Taj Mahal? Many of you would want to go and see it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Many people say, oh, I want to get off the tourist track, and but you know what? You will be very grateful for the tourist track once you get off it you know for me people say oh I don't really want to go to hang around Paha Ganj in Delhi because there's loads of tourists there's nothing there but you know I really really appreciate the the infrastructure the, the tourist restaurants the the medicine that's in day and 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 everything that comes with it from you staying in these tourist areas and if you've just come into this country you, it's common knowledge that it's very intense. It's a very intense place for you to come and visit India worldwide. Everybody knows it. So for you to come somewhere with a good tourist infrastructure, there's nothing wrong with that. So we're going to talk about the two. The, I'm going to say the big two routes that people take. Um, and it's either north or south, simple and plain. And the northern route let's start with that that can come for you landing in Delhi and this takes in the classical destinations Varanasi, Agra, Rajasthan and that includes Jaipur, Jodhpur, um, Udaipur, Jalsamir these places these are iconic to the country and this is very simple for you to to, to travel in and I recommend this very much so. It's India as you dreamed it to be. It's big, it's grand, the palaces are grand, and there's t t jungles, a tiger field. There's a lot there for you, and, um, and, and there's a good infrastructure. And the infrastructure is very, very important for a reason, a hidden reason, and that is areas like Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, they, they, they see a lot of foreign backpackers, well, West Bengal and places, um, they see a lot of foreign backpackers and that makes it possible for you to travel on a budget. Now, I've gone through before previously in other videos that, about budgeting and about what you could expect from your time and your money. Uh, this is, it's a funny old thing because people think that you can travel on $20 a day. I, I don't want to get into that again, but just forget that as an idea because that might have been true many years ago, but you can't do that today. And if you stick to these routes where you've got this really good tourist infrastructure, then you will be able to keep your budget down. And if you do come to any of the big cities, and this is particularly so on the next route that I'm going to talk about in the south, then the, the big cities have hostels in them. And these hostels, because the cost of a night's stay is, is very expensive. And if you cater mostly for domestic tourists, then they don't mind, as you wouldn't mind, if you was just going somewhere for a few days, you wouldn't mind splurging a little bit and paying 30, 40 pounds or 
or 100 pounds even for, for a night stay. I mean, if you're just traveling for the weekend, it's not the end of the world. But if you're traveling for months, then it's a big issue. So if you want to keep your costs down, it's a good idea to stick to areas where there's good tourist infrastructure. Now that's key. Now the second area where you can go to is the south. Now the south is radically different from the north. The north is, is you've got the deserts of Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh is nearly desert, and, and it's very harsh and inhospitable place, whereas the south tends to be very lush and is green, and this is, has a deeply tropical vibe to it. Now the south takes in more of the iconic places that you know, um, like Goa, everybody knows Goa, they go there for the beach life, and um, the beaches there are okay, they're okay. I'm not a massive fan, I'm not a great advocate of Goa, but I love the food, and I love the architecture, and I love the culture in Goa, but I'm not wild on the beaches. But many people go there for the hedonistic view. You know, you do get to party all night out on the beach if you want. Uh, and if you go south, from there you've got Karnataka. Karnataka's got a little bit of everything. You've got Hampe, you've got some very nice beaches actually. Um, and then you've got uh, um, tea plantations. You've got some fantastic um, national parks as well. And then you can head down into Kerala Kerala's iconic, we all know that, and Tamil Nadu. These places are ideal for you. I'm not gonna go through each individual destination and tell you how fantastic they are, but you're gonna wanna split your trip up um, to either north or south, depending on how much time you've got. Um, people, some people wanna spend two weeks in the north and two weeks in the south. No, if you want to see anything and see anything of value, then, um, I don't think that's a good idea, really, to be honest, because it's it's so vast, it's better to take your time and see more. Trust me, I've spent a long time traveling in India, in India, excuse me, then you will see more and have a richer experience if you don't try and fly through it. If you've got two weeks uh, and two weeks and, and you try and do that, you'll see very, very little. It's better that you invest one month into into uh, one state like Rajasthan, say, because there's a lot there. There's a lot there, you know. And so, take your time, see more. It's more budget friendly, and you'll get a richer experience. Yeah, but you need to think about how long have you got. Like minimum, I would say that you could see see these areas in depth is a month and a month. So minimum two months. You can spend a month in the north and a month in the south. Because these are massive areas, massive areas. And overnight trains, these are not unusual. So, but these are the two key areas. Now, my advice to you is to research these and have a look online um, and see what it is that appeals to you. You can check out my website. It's uh, Gary Mason Travels. Um, there's oodles of information on there for you to look through and to, um, and to draw in, uh, inspiration from. See what appeals to you because you work very hard for your money and you work very hard for your travel, your experience. So it's only right that you want to get the most out of it. And that is my aim is to help you get the most out of it um, because I spent a long time there and it really does amaze me, the country amazes me, and I've made a lot of mistakes, so now I want to help you to, to get the most out of your time and money. Now, in a nutshell, to sum up, you can either go north or you can go south. Um, do, you can do, we've been through that. But what you do is have a look what appeals to you most because you can't see it all. You can't see it all. And, you know, over half a decade traveling in India and I still feel like I haven't seen anything. I'll be going there again once the global pandemic finally clears up. And, uh, and, and I've got to say, I'm going to spend four months in just the Northeast and two months in the Andaman Islands and two months in Ladakh. And that's it. That's how long it takes to travel. 
So if you have just started to travel and you have just started to open your eyes and you want an introduction to India, then don't be shy to take on those big hit insights because I've thoroughly enjoyed my time on these routes. But you can't see it all. Focus on this. This is where it'll be easiest for you. And that is the message ultimately that I want to deliver in this video. And I hope I haven't rambled too much. And you know how it is. If you enjoyed my content and you liked what it is that I have to say, then do subscribe and smash that like button. That would be a big help. So that just about does it. Uh, there's not a lot more to, to say on your recommended routes. You know what you need to do now. And this is a good foundation for you to have a look at where it is that appeals to you most. And with that said, I shall see you in the next video.